Uh, you know, I was so excited when, when Ben said we're going to talk about the, destroying the spirit of death because, man, I hate that guy. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're going to get rid of him tonight. And I want to uh, share a story with you and then show you what the Bible says about what Jesus did to destroy death so that we can begin to walk in this truth. We, we, there's no reason why we should be under the effects of any sort of death, decay, or corruption. Amen? Because of Jesus' work. So like four years ago now, I think one night I was in my uh, bedroom. I was not feeling good. I'd been actually pretty sick for a while. My dog was really sick. He'd been seizing, like, for, you know, a couple days. Like, it was terrible. I was praying for him, laying in bed. And all of a sudden, this creepy, like, black, shadowy specter entered my room and, like, creeped up on my bed and said my name out loud. I actually heard him say my name out loud. He was like, Katie. <laughs> like some creepy, cheap, scary movie thing, you know? And I was like... Oh, God, who is that? And he says, that's the spirit of death. He's on, um, he's on assignment to kill you both. And when, the, when he said that, when the Lord said that, I, for, I, I'm so grateful for the Holy Ghost, right? I, I heard this scripture right away. It said, the last enemy to be put under your feet is death. And when I heard that, I was like in my bed looking at this thing going, uh -huh, uh, yeah, uh -huh, uh, yeah. right? Now, I, I actually got a little too cocky too fast. Because I didn't realize how wicked the battle was going to be. Okay. So death went after, after me, right? After every part of my life. Like, I, and within like two weeks, I went into menopause. He started to kill my body off. I gained like eight pounds in less than a week. You know when you gain eight pounds in like seven days without changing your eating habits or anything? You know you're under demonic assault. All right? Eight pounds, and everything started falling apart. I mean, like, hot flashes, crazy hot flashes came. I had already been healed of the sweaty Bettys. Like, a few years back, I had the sweaty Bettys so bad that, you know, I had to have, like, this little diaper bag that I ran around with, with, like, body wipes and perfume and change of clothes, because I never know when I was going to get hit, Right. But I, I got supernaturally healed of those. The Lord told me to, I want you to teach a certain revelation on this certain day, and then you're going to get healed. And I did. I totally got delivered of the sweaty Bettys. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this menopause thing, I got this thing. It's over, right? Oh, no. I found out there's a way big difference <laughs> between the sweaty Bettys and the hot flashes. Okay, hot flashes are like when this, like, raging volcano explodes in your body, and the flames lick up ah, and consume you. Like the fires of hell, all right? And I was having those things like all day long. And the hubby, man, we live in Arizona, okay? So like, right, it's hotter than H-E double toothpicks all the time in Arizona. So I'm, I'm in, in Arizona, and my husband likes to put the AC at 80, 80. Right? And, and, and he's like, the mama knows how to cook, right? So I'm always on the stove cooking four burners going for the Hobbit. And he's got it at 80, and I'm hot flashing. So I'd be at the stove, I'm chefing up dinner and all that, and then one would hit. Right? And I'd be like, honey, it's great. Oh, whew. can you please turn down the air conditioner? It's at 80, babe. I know that, honey. Can I, just, just a little bit. I'm cooking. I got a flash going on here. He goes, it's fine. You'll get over it. <laughs> like, who's cooking your dinner? You better watch it. Right? So I'm sitting there. I'm like, no, I really need you to bump down the AC just a little bit. And I need you to do it now. And he goes, it'll pass, honey. It'll pass. I'm like, do it now or I'm going to pull your head off and eat it. I mean, it was seriously horrible, all right? And everything started to go south. I mean, everything. Face went south. Okay, mm, went south. <laughs> everything started to sag and bag and lag and drag. I mean, this, this hair had like a ball of frizz as big as my fist. 
I'm serious. So I would have to come home. I'd come home from, from tour, and I would put, like, this massive different concoction of conditioners on, right? Like, like five different conditioners, oil, avocado, you name it, mayonnaise, everything. And then I would stack it on top of my head and then go in the kitchen and wrap my head with saran wrap. I look like a cone head. Seriously, like a conehead. So, and then, so that's how I walked around on my days when I was home. And so my husband, we had this little joke. He would say, oh, I only get to see Jeannie in the bottle, not out. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Poof, throat punch, poof, right? Oh, and it was just terrible. I, was, I, I felt like I'd aged like 10 years overnight. And my husband would be like, hey, you're all right, honey, you're all right. You know, I, 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 it's okay that we're getting old together. He goes, I have this dream. I have this dream that, you know, we're, we're old and gray hair, and we're holding hands, and we're hobbling down the beach <laughs> into the sunset. And I'm like, get behind me, Satan. I said, you can hobble down the beach all day long. I'm going to be running down the beach in a hot pink bikini. My hair braided like Bo Derek. <sighs> it was horrible. I'm telling you. That beast, he went after everything. Then he went after my ministry. Oh, and then it got, it's like, oh my God, right? Took out four of my top employees, killed four of my best friends, including one of my friend's babies. Took out all of our high donors, went after all of our uh, people that were doing like the social media, everything. I mean, the whole ministry started to die, 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 die. It was crazy. My dogs killed both of my dogs within two weeks of each other. Yeah. This was serious. Now I'm mad. Ooh, now I'm mad. Ooh. Ooh. And I was like, God, what is this and why? And you got to show me. And I began to have revelation unpacked to me about this beast. And look, this is... This is what we have to do now. The last enemy to be put under our feet is death. The church has to come into corporate understanding and revelation on how Jesus has already destroyed death. And we have to believe and we have to walk in it. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? All right, so we're going to look at it and just so that you're clear on everything that you need to start really focusing on and believing. I'm just going to throw first some scriptures at you, and then we're going to start walking through revelation and activation. Okay, Hebrews 2.14 says, uh, Since therefore his children share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, he himself, meaning Jesus, in a similar manner partook of the same nature, that by going through death he might bring to naught and make of no effect one who had the power of death, that is the devil. Do you see that? Through Jesus' death, when he tasted the sting of death for us on our behalf, he brought to what? He brought to naught and made of no effect the power of the one who had the power of death, that is the devil. What does to naught and to no effect mean? To naught. To no effect. Zero, zilch, nada. That means that we should not, not have any effect of death. We should not be dying of COVID. We should not be dying of old age. We should not be dying. We should not be decaying and, and, and having menopause and having disease and having our organs go south and everything else go south. None of that. Not and to no effect means not and to no effect. It doesn't mean halfway. Look, we, we're all, as believers, we, you know, you eventually, we all believe, okay, we're going to eventually die and go and have eternal life. That's great. But we should not have death while we're here on the planet. He brought to not and to no effect death. Death should not be affecting your hair, your skin, your organs, your cells, your bones, your blood. Your ministry, your money, your marriage, your life. That thing almost took up my marriage. I'm telling you, that after that, my husband and I got in the worst fights, worst time in our life because that beast tries to kill everything in your life. Lucky thing, we don't believe in divorce. 
and now we're stronger than ever. And he's not dead yet, so this is good. <laughs> to not and to no effect. Listen to this. 2 Timothy 1.10. It is for that purpose which he has now made known and is fully disclosed and made real to us through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who annulled death and gave us life and immortality. He has what? Annulled death. Abolish death, destroy death. What is annulled and abolished and destroyed? Means, meaning it does, it does not exist anymore because Christ has annulled it. He has abolished it. He has destroyed it and given us life and immortality. We cannot, we have to start believing what Jesus has accomplished for us at the very least, at the very least, at the very least, you should believe that if you're going to die on this planet and then go and have eternal life, that you die leaving a good looking corpse. And you're energetic and strong and disease free until the very last breath. If you die of a disease or if death is in the room when you pass on to glory, something's wrong. Something's wrong. We have to believe. Do we believe that nothing is impossible with Christ? We have to believe that. Jesus said in John 6, he said this of himself, I'm the bread of life that gives life the life-giving bread. Your forefathers ate man in the wilderness, and yet they died. But this is the bread. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven so that anyone may eat of it and never die. Never die. Look, I'm not going to go so far tonight as to preach immortality, though I will one day. But I'm telling you right now, why should your organs ever die? Why should your skin ever die? Why should your hair ever die? Why should your bones ever decay and die? Because when you eat this bread, you will never die. Oh, really? That's all you got? That's all you got? I've never been pelted by a shoe before. <clears throat> Here's a first for everything. Thank you, Jesus. We should not be decaying. So I, I got to go to it. I'm sorry. <sighs> Psalm 16. I'm going to go to it and read it. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic on this one, on most of them, just so that you know. Okay. This is David speaking. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. That's verse 8. Verse 9. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory, my inner self, my soul rejoices. My body, too, shall rest and confidently dwell in safety. For you will not abandon me to Sheol, the place of the dead. Neither will you suffer your holy one, little h, holy one, and then brackets, holy one, big h, holy one, to see corruption. Okay? You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Do you know that the pleasure, word pleasure there is, means beauty and loveliness? At God's right hand is beauty, loveliness. What's at God's right hand? Christ. Who's seated with Christ in heavenly realms? 
So at the right hand of God is what? Beauty and loveliness because we're seated in heavenly realms with Christ. And that's where the path of life is. And as we follow that path of life, what happens? He does not abandon us to show the place of the dead. And we don't suffer or see corruption. And our body too shall rest and confidently dwell in safety. Look, how can your body rest if it's decaying? If it's corrupting? If it's aging, if it's getting weaker, you're losing your strength, you're losing your vitality, you're becoming barren instead of fertile, you're aging, you're seeing the, the effects of corruption and death. That's not your body resting in safety. Well, that scripture says that he will not allow his holy one, little h and holy one, big h, seed decay. That holy one, little h is us. The Holy One, big H, is Jesus. He was prophesying, I'm not going to let you be in the grave, Jesus, because you're going to conquer the grave. You're going to come out, come out of the grave. You will not see corruption. But guess what? All the other little Holy Ones won't either. Their bodies will rest in safety. They will not see, their bodies will not see corruption and decay. Look, if we're, cor if we're decaying, then we're not walking in the fullness of what Jesus has won for us, and that is a punch in the eye of our Lord and Savior who bled and died to taste death for us. You're not excited enough. John 8, 51, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone observes my teachings, lives in accordance with my message, keeps my word, he will in by no means ever see or experience death. You guys, get out of the box. Get out of the box. You will never see or experience death. Maybe we go, yeah, yeah, we're going to die and go to eternity, live forever. But you'll still have to die to get there. Just saying. Why? Enoch and Elijah didn't do it. Okay, now I'm crossing the line over what I promised not to go to. <sighs> don't tempt me. Don't, don't. Look, no, but look, look, look. We should never see and experience death in our skin, in our organs, in our cells, in our hair, in our spines, our bones, our joints, our ligaments, our lymphatic system, reproductive system, digestive system, re respiratory system, circulatory system. Why do we have to see? Jesus said, whoever follows my teachings, observes my commandments, keeps my word, keeps my message, will never see or experience death. Look, I'm, 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 I'm coming up to 60 here. I am going to believe that as I believe, time is going to either freeze or go backwards for me. And I don't, you know, if God takes me in 10 years or 20 years or 100 years or five, whatever, whatever, all I know is this. I said, I'll live as long as you want me to, God. Just make sure that I live long, strong, and good looking until the very end. I'm just saying. Look, and you think, oh, no, we can't have that. But here's what, the, here's what Romans 6 says. Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we may, too, habitually live in newness of life. What does it habitually live? It's a habit, right? You do it over and over and over and over and over again. It's saying, wow, you've already gone out down in death with Christ at the cross. Which means you have everything he won when he died for us. Which is when he made, he brought the power of death to naught and to, to no effect. To naught to, to and to no effect. Can you say it with me? To naught and to no effect. We've been baptized into that. And now we've been raised to new life to live habitually. Habitually in newness of life. What does habitually mean? Every day to be walking in the power of life. In the resurrection power of life. 
I mean, you have the Holy Spirit in you who quickens your mortal body. If you're getting old, your body is not being quickened. We have to believe. We have to believe everything that Jesus done, did for us. So we can start seeing the quickening power of the resurrection power of Christ, the Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead, quickening our mortal bodies. <sighs> we should be getting younger. Hezekiah got 15 more years of life. Do you know that my legs were so, I, oh God, my, I, my legs got super sucked up at one point. It's happened to me twice. First time it was because of bitterness of soul. I got that taken care of. And then I, I don't know what, well, I have an idea, but it's too long of a story. Okay, so my legs got really sucked up. And, I, and the Lord said, why don't, you, why don't you go back in time and get 15 more years of life? Like Hezekiah, do you think he got 15 more years of life extended? Or do you think he just got 15 years younger? I'm like, I don't know, I'll take both. And he said, I want you to look at the story where the sundial went back 10 steps on the sundial of Ahaz. I said, okay. Remember that story? Sundial went back 10 steps of Ahaz. Well, I looked at it. It said that the, that the shadow turned back 10 steps. Well, you know what the word shadow there means? Decimated limbs. Decimated limbs. I embraced that word. And I said, God, you're going to take me back 10 steps so that my decimated limbs can return 15 years back younger than they are, and I'll have you 15 more years of life. And guess what? Since that time, my legs, I have the pictures to prove it. I put tape measures on my legs and measured them, and every month they grew an inch. I've got two and a half inches now on these legs. <laughs> Decimated limbs no more, baby. Because you know when folk get old, their legs and their arms start getting sucked up, and they start walking. Oh, God. My dad did that. My dad, his, his limbs got sucked up. What is that? The effects of death. That is the effects of death. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Did you hear me? We don't have to be under the effects of death. Jesus tasted the sting of death for us. He brought, he abolished death and brought us life and immortality. He brought the power of death to naught and to no effect. And when we follow and believe in his message and his word, we will never see or experience death. Do you understand what the scripture says? Romans 8, 2, for the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, has freed me from the law of sin and death. What does freed mean? Freed. I've been in prison. I know what freed means. Shackles off. Somebody comes clinking down the hallway, one of the CO, the police, with a big rod, with a big thing of keys, and clink, and opens the door and lets you out. Freed from the law of sin and death. Freed from the law. It's too big for people to imagine. But nonetheless, even if your brain can't comprehend that that's truth, it is what the word says. And God is not a man that he should lie. I'm just preaching scripture, not my opinion. This isn't my opinion. This is scripture. So if all this is true, how come we're not seeing it? Because the world as a mass whole is aging rapidly. So how come we're not seeing it? I'll tell you why. Number one, number one, trauma, which leads to bitterness, which leads us to agree with the spirit of death. Trauma, which leads to bitterness, which leads us to agree with the spirit of death. I'm going to go to the book of Job. Okay, if you remember, book of Job, lots of trauma. Lots of trauma, right? Okay, like the enemy actually came. And he made storms in Job's life. Don't, don't, even, don't even think 
that the devil's not making storms in your life for the reason of what? To traumatize you. So that you'll get bitter about your trauma and then say, ah, that's it, I quit. I don't want to live no more. Come get me Jesus. That's what happened to Job. The enemy comes and stirs up a bunch of storms against him. First he stirs up the enemy to come and, and take all of Job's wealth. All his flocks, his herds, everything. Then that same enemy kills all of Job's servants. Okay, so you thought the church staff was abandoning ship? Well, all the staff went on that one. All out. Then the enemy actually creates a whirlwind from the desert. He can do stuff in the natural Creates a whirlwind in the desert. Hello, Satan did that. Hello. And the whirlwind comes and knocks down the house where all of Job's children are in there feasting. And then if that wasn't enough trauma, then next chapter, chapter 2, he creates a storm of sickness. Oh, God. Hmm, storm of sickness. Sound familiar? Storm of sickness. Yeah. Worldwide COVID plague. Stirs up a storm of sickness. Job, top of his head, soles of his feet, covered with painful boils. That's a lot of trauma. A lot of trauma. Do you think you've been through a lot of trauma? Have we been through a lot of trauma? Here's what happened. Job got bitter about his trauma. Chapter 3. The entire chapter, Job is talking about how wounded he is from all the trauma and in the middle of saying all this stuff, the entire chapter is about him cursing the day he was born, wishing he was never alive, wishing he would die. He's saying this, after this, meaning after all that trauma, Job opened his mouth and cursed his day, his birthday. He said, let that day perish where I was born. The night that was announced, there's a man child conceived. Let it be barren. Let it be solitary. Let, the sh let it shut the doors of my mother's womb and, and curse her breast. Why was I not stillborn? Why did I not give up the ghost when my mother bore me? Then he says this. He says, why is light given to him who is in misery and life? To the bitter in soul who long and wait for death. But it comes not. Who dig for death more than for hidden treasure. Who rejoice exceedingly and are elated when they find the grave. Do you see what happened? This is a pattern. Now, y'all may not be in this pattern. But I bet you some people are. And that's why I had to preach this part of it. Because I can't go over this part without getting people free of this. The pattern is the enemy creates storms. Those storms traumatize you beyond, beyond belief. You get bitter about the trauma, and then you wish you would die. Okay, look. It's quiet up in this house. It's okay to admit that that's happened to you. It happened to me. It's happened to all of us. I mean, for real. We're all family here. How many people have had that pattern happen where you've been so traumatized? Yeah, see? See that? Almost everybody. And we all say, we, we, we get, oh, I can't believe this is happening. You know, God could stop this. God could stop this? Look. Hebrews. Psalms 8. Noah, when he got out of the boat, God says, I give you dominion. Over all the works of my hands. We're in charge here. We're in charge here. So when Jesus was asleep in the boat during the storm. And what does his disciples say to him? Master, don't you care that we're perishing? You don't think Jesus cared that the boat might sink? He's in the boat with you, fool. <laughs> Hello? Guess what? Jesus is in the boat with you. He cares if the boat sinks. Okay? Stop accusing God of not caring in the storm and getting bitter about it. Why hasn't he stopped it? He could snap his fingers and it would all be over. No. Do you want to be in charge of the planet or not? Just saying. Just saying. Do you get it? Look. We've all done it, and we have to catch ourselves. We've got to get healed now, and we have to catch ourselves, all right? When, when, when trauma hits, 
you got to realize you're being traumatized. And that you have the Holy Ghost in you. You have Jesus. You have power. You will see power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Acts 1.8. That word power there means excellence of soul, if you haven't heard my teachings before. you got excellence of soul healing power in you. When you have to recognize when you're being traumatized. Recon that's a bumper sticker. Recognize when you're being traumatized. Maybe that's a rap. It's a rap. That's what it is. You gotta recognize. And you gotta release the Holy Ghost and dunamis power. That's what that word power is, dunamis. It means excellent soul. You, you gotta just sit down there and go, Jesus, help. I am being shipwrecked, stormed, crises, traumatized, and I need, I'm getting wounded. Wow. I need you. I need you to come, and I need you to heal me. I need you to fill me with your power. I need you to make me what dunamis means, excellent of soul, because I recognize that I'm in a dangerous place. You need to do that, because if you don't, you're going to start getting bitter about it. Ah, oh, I can't believe this is happening. That person, if that person says one more word, I'm going to wring their neck. Now, you might think you wouldn't say that about people, but I would. So I'm just telling you, you know, yeah, you can't take, you can take the girl out of the street, but not all the street out of the girl. Okay? You've got to catch yourself when you're being traumatized. And if you didn't, and you missed the boat, and you got bitter about it, you guys, honestly, you know, people, it's, it's not in fashion to repent. Get over it. It's in fashion. It's in fashion. All right. When you get bitter, repent of your bitterness. Repent of your bitterness. Because what's going to happen if you don't, pretty soon you'll be saying foolish stuff like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I quit. Better if I just go to heaven right now. Boy, I'd just rather die and go be with the Lord. Why would I want to stay? It's just too much, too much, too much. Can't do it. Can't do it anymore. I'm done. Finished. What are you doing? You're basically giving full-on permission for death to come and afflict you. You've provided the legal landing strip. Not God. You have. Jesus already died for that. He's not going to put death on you. You bring death on yourself. Do you understand? I'm not trying to spank you, but bend over. Just saying. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so uh, we're going to pause for station identification, and we're going to do a little activation. Ooh, that rhymed. <laughs> Man, I'm getting good at this. Somebody play the rap music. Come on. Give me a beat. Somebody give me a beat. No. <laughs> okay, look. Who's in you? His spirit too, right? Spirit of Christ. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So when the, did the Spirit, when he came in, did he come alone? He brought what? Power with him. <laughs> See? He, he's, not, he's not power. He's a person. He brought power with him. And he administrates it. See that? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 2.10 says, and you should go read this. You should mark it and put it in your Bible. 1 Corinthians 2.10, my favorite scripture ever. In the Amplified Classic, it says, um, it says, and the spirit explores and examines all things, finds the things that are hidden from us and beyond our scrutiny, and brings us to the divine counsels of God. Okay? So right now, you're going to ask the spirit, right now, you're going to lay your hand in your belly and your heart, and you're going to ask the spirit to search your inner man. For every bit of wounding inside of you that came from trauma. All right? 
That's our first step. Ready? Say, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I release the Holy Spirit according to 1 Corinthians 2.10. Holy Spirit, explore, examine everything in my soul. Find the things that are hidden from me <clears throat> and beyond my scrutiny. Bring me the divine counsels of God and, and, and put a spotlight in my soul and search for every wound in my mind, will, and emotions that came from trauma and any wounds that came from the sin of bitterness and the sin of agreeing with death. Say, I break my covenant with death. Say, I repent for saying anything like I want to die or I quit. I will never say that again with the help of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I divorce my covenant with death. I annul it. I abolish it. Because Jesus has already done it for me. And he brought the power of death to naught and to no effect. So, Lord, I thank you that your Holy Spirit is scanning, searching, examining my soul to find every wound from trauma, bitterness, and death and fill it with dunamis power. Dunamis power. I am filled with excellence of soul, soul healing power. My mind is healed. My will is healed. My emotions are healed. I think right thoughts. My memory bank is healed. I make Holy Ghost decisions. Not decisions based on bitterness or trauma. Not decisions to quit, but to live. I have Holy Ghost, fruit of the Spirit, emotions. My emotions are filled with dunamis power. They are excellent of soul. I have fruit of the Spirit emotions, love, joy, Peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control. I am not full of bitterness. I repent for being bitter. I thank you, Lord. I choose life, not death. I choose life, not death. Jesus is bringing me life in my inner man and my body. Now lay hands on your neighbor. Start praying in the ghost right now. Start decreeing that they are full of the Holy Spirit and doing His power. That they're not dwelling among the pain of the past. They're not dwelling among the traumas and dramas and baby mamas. That they're filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. Minister to your neighbor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep going. Release dunamis power into them. Decree their excellent of soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I decree it over you. You're filled with the Holy Ghost and dunamis power. Every, every wound of trauma, bitterness, death right now, being healed right now. Being healed right now. You are filled in your soul, mind, will, and emotions, in your inner man, with power, power, power. Your excellent soul in your mind, will, and emotions. Right now in Jesus' name, all trauma healed, all trauma healed, all agreements with death nullified. All agreements with death nullified. All agreements with death nullified. All agreements with death are nullified. Nullified, nullified, nullified in Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. How many of you are going to remember this moment and never fall in to the pattern again? When storms come, you got to realize that Satan is making storms in order to what? Get you traumatized so that you'll then get bitter about the trauma so then you'll wish you were dead. Say, I will never fall into that pattern again. Now give God a big shout. Okay, now, so the soul is the first landing strip, eh, for the devil to put death on you, okay? What else? The law. Oh, the law. You know, the Bible says the law is holy, right? The law is, was meant to be good. But Paul said that very thing that was meant to give me life has brought me death. Okay? You know what the wages of sin are? So when you break the law, you're going to have the wages of what? Right. I want to show you something. Romans 7, 5. Hunter, you have that one. Do you have that for me? Romans 7, 5. Throw that up on the board. Look at this. When we were living in the flesh, mere physical lives, the sinful passions that were awakened and aroused up by what the law makes sin... We're constantly, read this part with me, ready? Constantly operating in our bodily organs so that we bore fruit for death. Keep that up there, Hunter. Let that percolate for a minute. Do you see that? When we break the law, what happens? Sin and the law are, begin to constantly operate where? In our bodily organs to do what? Produce fruit for death. Do you know that we have 72 organs? 72. And you know what one of our biggest organs is? Our skin. Doctors call our skin an organ. And it's the biggest organ in our body. So you wonder why we're getting wrinkles and the saggy, and the baggy. Because we're lawbreakers. And Satan knows that this is his loophole to put death, to constantly be operating and producing fruit for death in our bodily organs. You know that James 2.10 says that no one can keep the whole law? That if you break one area of it, you've broken it all. And Satan knows this stuff. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a very fortunate thing that the Bible says that Jesus fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on our behalf. That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what it says. Did you hear what I said? That's what it says. Romans 8, 4. Put that up, Hunter, just so everybody doesn't think that I'm, like, making it up. Look at that. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Look, it, look, does this mean that we, that we can misbehave? No, we, 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 we're supposed to be holy as he's holy. But we got to know this, it's impossible. But it, is it impossible for us to keep the whole law? That's just a fact. No one can. It says that, 
that God did what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. Our flesh is too weak to keep the law perfectly. So along comes Jesus, the perfect man, the God man on earth. Okay? And he had no sin. He never broke the law. He kept every jot and every tittle of the law his entire life while he was here on earth in that sin, that likeness of a sinful body that he took on. And then he went to the, to the cross as the perfect man who had never broken the law so he could die for you and what? Fulfill the righteous requirements of the law in us. Did you hear what I said? We have to focus on what Jesus did for us. When you start to see death producing fruit in your bodily organs because of your law-breaking, you need to repent of any law-breaking you're doing and then turn around to the devil and say, but you know what, devil? <laughs> Jesus already fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on my behalf. That needs to be your mantra. That needs to be your chant. That needs to be your meditation. This is your truth. We have to be totally dependent on Christ. You know, uh, uh, there, oh God, do you hear what I'm saying to you? If we could fulfill the law perfectly, guess what? The Bible says that Jesus died in vain. And his death was wholly superfluous. Because if we could keep the law totally, why would we need Christ? We wouldn't need him. We have to have him. Because of him, he fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on our behalf, and that means that death cannot continue to produce fruit in our bodily organs. You got a kidney problem, you got a heart problem, you got a lung problem, you got a gallbladder problem, you got a skin problem. What, what organ is being attacked? You need to tell death to back off. Because Jesus already fulfilled the righteous requirement of the law for you. Do you understand? You have to start decreeing and believing what Jesus has accomplished for you. Amen. Do you hear me? Can we all say amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus, Lord God. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I said. I sat on the plane one day and read all the scriptures and bawled my eyes out. Because I can't believe, I couldn't believe how good. We don't deserve any of this. We don't deserve it at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. But he gave it to us anyway. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse, the doom of the law. And it's condemnation. He himself becoming a curse for us. Did you hear me? Look, you're going to be like, oh, she's preaching that grace message. Look, I'm telling you what. It's going to take mega grace to overcome mega death. But here's the deal. Screw it up, and you're just asking for death. People are, like, taking the grace message way too far, and they're using grace as their reason. And I know people right now, big names. If I told you the names, you would know exactly what I'm talking about, that are in deep sin, deep sexual sin, deep sin, all kinds of sin. You know what that is? The wages of sin are death. I'm not wishing that upon nobody, but they're inviting death to come upon them in the midst of their false doctrine of this, of this grace that enables them to do whatever they want. They're going to get exactly the opposite of what they're looking for. I'm just saying. Did you hear me? These are all the things that Christ has done for us. Okay, now look, look, look. We have to start testifying to what Christ did. The Bible says that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and our testimony, right? Now, you know, the word testimony is a legal term. It's a legal term, okay? What does that mean? That, that this is a legal matter. You're being accused of breaking the law. So whether or not you like the doctrine of the courts of heaven or not, you got to start going in the courts to testify in court as to everything Jesus did for you because you're being accused of breaking the law and lawbreakers are taken to court. And guess what? Whoever doesn't show up for court loses. I know. <laughs> I know. Because I used to get arrested. I got arrested before I went to do my Fed time. I got arrested 12 times in one year. 
12 times. I remember standing in the in holding, and there and, and I could see the the police behind the glass, and they were looking at the computer. And they, one guy looks at the other police and goes, oh, "She's been here twelve times." And I went, "Hi!" I thought for some reason that was cool. I was like, "Yep, mm, that's me. Twelve times, one year. Has it been that many? Wow! <laughs> I'm exceeding my own expectations. <sighs> yeah, twelve times." And then I would, I'd have money in my pocket because I was a dope dealer. So I bail myself out with the promise of coming back to court which I would not do. So what would happen? They would send out a warrant for my arrest, and then the police would come and find me and arrest me. Moral of the story, whoever doesn't show up for court loses. This is a legal matter. You're being accused of, 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 of breaking the law, which is allowing death to produce fruit in your bodily organs. So you need to go and testify. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and our testimony. Where do you testify? In court. You need to go into the grace court to face these charges. You need to ascend into that place. And you can do it easily because the Bible says, um, uh, Hebrews 4.16, that we can go boldly before the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. Guess what the word throne there means? A judge's bench. The grace court is a court in heaven, just like there's, you know, criminal court here and divorce court and civil court and, and supreme court. There's all these different courts in the earth. Well, there's a bunch of different courts in heaven, too. You got to go in the grace court. Why? Because grace trumps over the law. Let's talk about that. Oh, and remember, I'm not advocating no repentance. When you mess up, you better repent. And I'll tell you why. God gives grace to the humble. What's the best way to humble yourself? That's right, repentance, babe. You know, I don't know why one court, one side thinks, oh, no, we don't need grace. The other side thinks, oh, no, we never need to repent. We need to meet in the middle. Because <laughs> the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that when you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And in the Amplified, it says, and dismiss your lawlessness. Dismiss your lawlessness. Look, I believe that the more we understand what Christ did for us, the less we're going to sin. Just naturally. The less we're going to sin. But if you fall into a trap, like agreeing with death, <laughs> or getting bitter, or whatever, you should probably um, uh, humble yourself and repent. Do you hear what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you? Does that offend you? Good. Now let's talk about grace. Let's see if anybody gets offended on that one. Just saying. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, ready? Let me just read a few scriptures to you. Romans 3, 20, 24. Hunter, can you get that up there? For no person will be justified, made righteous, acquitted. Acquitted, what's that? A legal term. Acquitted and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. But all are justified and made upright and right standing with God freely and graciously by his grace, his unmerited favor and mercy. Do you see that? Why does grace, why does grace get you acquitted? Because it's by grace through faith you're saved. So what happens? That word saved there means made whole, delivered, um, healed, protected, everything that comes with your salvation. And it's by grace through faith that you get everything in your salvation. Grace isn't a theology, guys. It's a power. It's a power that imparts to us everything Jesus w did for us on the cross. It's by grace through your faith in Christ that you are saved, that you get everything in your salvation. When you have faith in Jesus Christ, the power of grace comes and in slams an impartation of Jesus and the fact that he abolished death and gave us life and immortality. And he brought the power of death to naught and to no effect. And that when we follow his precepts that we will never see death. All those truths that he fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on our behalf. All those truths are given to us, imparted to us, um, imputed upon us by the power of grace through our faith in Christ. That's why we're acquitted and made upright and right standing with God through grace and not by us keeping the law. Does this make sense to you? Look, you got to take this devil to court, to the grace court, because that's grace where sin increases and abounds. Grace super abounds and increases the more. Grace trumps over the law. And you got to take it to the grace court. you got to go to court. Look, remember the, you remember the, the, the woman, the, the persistent widow? 
She went, she was going for the judge and go, avenge me of my adversary, avenge me of my adversary, avenge me of my adversary. He was an unrighteous judge. She finally said, I'm going to give her what she wants. Otherwise, she might like punch me in the face. You know, that's what I would have done anyway. So, okay. All right. And what is she was talking, what was she talking about? The word adversary there is antidikos. It means this, one who brings a lawsuit, specifically Satan. So she wasn't talking about going to court against people. Jesus was talking about us going to court against the one who's bringing a lawsuit against us, who is specifically Satan. Now, remember, she was a widow. Do you know what the word widow means by definition? One who's lost their spouse to death. You know what she was taking Satan to court for? He killed her husband. Which means her security was gone, her companionship was gone, the love of her life was gone, her protection was gone, her supply was gone. She was a widow. The spirit of death had hit her house. And what was she doing? Being persistent to go to court. To seek justice against her adversary, Satan, by very definition, the one who th brings a lawsuit. He's, he, he's bringing a lawsuit against you. And he's killing off stuff in our lives. People, businesses, ministries, marriages, children, family, money. You need to be persistent. Did you hear what I said? Are you following me? Okay. A couple more and then we're, then we're going to activate. Okay. I want to show you something. Let's look at Hunter. Let's look at Romans 4.16. This is Paul talking about Sarah and Abraham. Okay. I want you to think about it. Sarah was a babe, right? She was hot. Anybody who was kidnapped by two kings, once when she was 60 and once when she was in her 90s, has got to have it going on. <laughs> right? Now, Abraham was no slouch because after Sarah died, he went on to marry again and he had six more kids. That, like he was like a buck 40. <laughs> That's like working it. But here's the deal. Both of them at one time, the Bible says in Romans 4, that Abraham was impotent and Sarah's womb was deadened and buried, barren. So they weren't always fertile and good to go, if you know what I mean. Okay. So what happened? Here's what happened. Ready? This is Paul talking. He says, therefore, inheriting the promise. What was the promise? It was the promised child, Isaac, right? Okay, but in order to have the promised child Isaac, all the parts had to be working. You had to have restored youth. They had to have restored youth in order to inherit the promise. They had to have fertile body, hormones be right, him not being impotent, her not being barren. You understand what I'm saying? So in order to inherit the promise, they had to have a promise of restored youth first to have Isaac. So let's read it. So therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith it depends entirely on faith in order that it, meaning the promise of restored youth, might be given as a what? Read it with me. Act of grace. To make it, meaning the promise of restored youth, stable, valid, and guaranteed to all his descendants. That's us, hello. Hello. Not only to the devotees and inheritance of the law, but to also to those who share the faith of Abraham. How was it the promise of restored youth brought into Sarah and Abraham's life? By keeping the law? No. By what? Grace through faith. They believed in Christ. He believed in Christ. And his belief in Christ caused the power of grace to impute everything that Christ would eventually go to the cross for into their life. And it restored their youth. Did you hear what I said to you? Did you hear what I said to you? Did you hear what I said to you? Okay, now look at this. Go to this. Go to this. Um, oi. Oi. 
Remember that song? Oi, oi. Don't, don't sing it. It's, it's, we don't need ACDC vibes up in here. <laughs> okay, do you have Hunter Job 33 verses 19 and 20, 21, 22? You do? Put it up. I see 21, but do you have the ones before that? 19, 20? No, you, you went like this and then you went like this. Okay, no, okay, I'll read it. Ready? This is, this is Job, and it says this, verse 19. That a man is, has pain on his bed and continual strife in his bones, and while all his bones are fir firmly set, so that his desire makes him loathe food and even dainty dishes nauseate him, his flesh is so wasted away that it cannot be seen, and his bones... Uh, that were not seen stick out. His soul draws near to corruption and his life to the inflictors of death, the destroyers. Okay, so this guy, his flesh is wasted away. His bones are sticking out. He's nauseous. He can't even eat the food. He's got pain on his bed. And then in that verse, it tells us why. Verse 22, because his soul is drawing near to corruption and his life to the inflictors of death. Death, the destroyer. So who's making his flesh all wasted and his bones stick out and in pain and everything else? Death. Death, right? Death. His soul's in trouble and death is on him. All right, now look at this. And then we're going to do it. Now verse 24, Hunter. And this is, I'll tell you what God did about it. Ready? Then God is what? Then God is what? Then God is what? Then God is gracious to him and says, deliver him from going down to the pit of destruction. I have found a ransom. Who's that? A price of redemption. Who's that? An atonement. Who's that? Then the man's flesh shall be restored. It becomes fresher and more tender than a child's, and he returns to the days of his youth. Keep that up there, Hunter. Did you hear that? He, he, his bones were sticking out. His flesh was wasted away. He, he had continual pain on his bed. He, he couldn't eat. It was because he was what? Being inflicted by the death destroyers, the death inflictors. And then God tells you what the remedy is when death comes to inflict you, that he is gracious to you. And then he gives you a ransom in Jesus, who is our redemption, our atonement. And because of Jesus, and because of his grace, what happens? Our flesh becomes fresher than a child's, and we return to the days of our youth. Did you hear me? What do you think of that? Well, because Jesus has been given to us as a ransom, a price of redemption, and atonement, what happens? <laughs> That's right. Our flesh is restored. And by God's grace, he's graciously giving us Jesus when we didn't deserve it. And then Jesus did what? Brought to not and to no effect the power of death. Fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on our behalf. Broken us free from the law of the, of the curse of the law of sin and death. And when we follow his precepts, we shall never see or experience death. He's the bread of life, and whoever eats it may never die. It's quiet up in this church. Okay, we're going to play Marilyn. Watch this lady. She was Job. Her bones were sticking out. Her flesh was clinging to her. The spirit of death came off of her, and she got healed. Hunter, play, play Marilyn, spirit of death. Marilyn came up to me Thursday night. Well, first of all, tell them what was wrong with you, dear. I was dying. My body was dying. Tell them why. Because I'd had mold and radon poisoning, and the doctors couldn't bring my body back. My muscles had dissolved. I Your muscles had dissolved. I had nothing. I had bones showing. I had bones in my back. Doctors didn't know what to do, apparently, because I couldn't get weight. I couldn't get help. And I was dying. 
So you were dying. You couldn't gain weight. You couldn't get help. You told me you were so weak. All right, keep it down, you joyful people. <laughs> you told me you couldn't even eat. Very little. You couldn't walk. You didn't have any strength. Nope, I couldn't make it up the steps. I had to hang on to the railing. You had to hang on to the railing? I couldn't worship. I couldn't stand very long. I couldn't hold my arms up. I couldn't, I just, I had nothing left. I had no, no energy. Okay, when you came up to me, you told me, I'm dying. And I tell you what, look at her now. If you guys would have seen, look at her. Come here, uh, daughters. When I saw her, she looked like she was going to die. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. did your did your mom look different right now? Absolutely, yeah, totally. She was so weak, she had to pull the car over because she couldn't drive anymore. She couldn't hold her arms up to hold the steering wheel. She looked like death warmed over when I saw her. Because you know what? She was dying, and we knew it was her time. She had to come. Yeah, is that true? Yes. 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 Does your mom look different? Oh, yeah, she looks way different. Wait, I, I, could, I didn't even recognize her the next day. So you, you came up to me and you said, I'm dying. And I, and I said, I saw a vision. I saw a vision of me shaking you like this and rebuking death. And so I said, can I do that to you? Can I do something to you right now? And you said, you can do anything you want. And I said, well, put down your arms. You put down your arms. I grabbed a hold of you and I went, I command you, come out, death. 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 And down she went. I got the arm. Look at that. She's got the arm, the bruises to prove it. Hey! And then she started bawling. So I go like this. I go, oh my God, I hurt her. <laughs> and then I let her cry. And then afterwards I said, I said, what, what happened? And you said, I was laying there. And when I went back, fell down, I felt and saw a black poof of smoke out of my body and go up. And I turned to my daughter and I said, did you see that? And she said, no, I said it came out. I, saw, I felt it, I saw it. And I knew, I knew that I knew we came here so I could live. The spirit of death left her body. 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 When I first saw her that night, when she when I shook her <laughs> like that, uh, she came up and she was green and gray. She, I looked at her. I, it was like, whoa, she, she is dying. I, I was like trying to find my phone to take a picture of her because I knew something was about to happen, right? And uh, when I shook her and commanded death to come out, she went down. I thought I heard her. I was like, life, life, life. <laughs> Right? And uh, she came out, that's when she told me the black puff of smoke came out. So then, like, the next day, I'm up on the stage with, I think it was Patricia was there, Jessica Culliano, a bunch of people, and we're doing a panel, right? And I get down with the panel, I walk down, and this lady, all nice and quaffed, and everything, comes to me, hi, Katie. And I looked at her and went, Marilyn? She looked like night and day within less than 24 hours. She said, I came this morning. She goes, I drove all the way here. She goes, I got out of the car. We had to park firework because the parking lot was full. She goes, I beat all my family to the front door. She goes, I stood at the front door, opening the door for everybody coming in, went going like this. I couldn't do this before. I couldn't do this before. I couldn't do this before. She goes, she goes, I came home. She goes, and I was dancing wildly doing all of worship right in front of you, Katie, and you didn't even recognize it was me. She went to lunch. She said, I ate all of my lunch every bit. Then I saw her six months later. They came to another meeting of mine. Her whole family came, grandchildren, new husband, because both of her and her husband had lost their previous spouses to death. It was in the family. And it was trying to take her out. Husband came up, all the family, all the grandkids, everybody, they all cried. Husband was like, I thought I was going to lose. I, he goes, I just lost my first wife. I thought I was going to lose my, my soulmate, that I found my soulmate. And he goes, but I knew she was healed that night because she didn't even have to tell me. He said, she called and she went, hello, darling. Right? I seen him again after that, like a year later. She's like, 
They go out on walks. They spend time with their grandkids. She got delivered of the spirit of death. Amen? Yeah. All right, now play uh, Hunter. Play uh, uh, Dead Bone. Terry Dead Bone. What's your name, dear? Terry Woods. Terry, you're... You came up to me, your eyes, you still have, your eyes are filled with tears, and you said 100%. 100%. What, what, what was it, Terry? What did you have? A dead bone in my shoulder. What is a dead bone? The socket is, is uh, the ball is dead. The ball of the socket in your shoulder is dead. How, does the, how did they find out? Did they take an x-ray? What did, how did they find out it was dead? MRIs and x-rays. MRIs and x-rays. And I have surgery date for the 24th of this month. Oh, not anymore, baby. Oh, yeah. Give glory to God. Give glory to Jesus Christ. Give glory to Jesus. That's right. What kind of complications did you face? Pain from it? Yes. Yes. How much was your pain every day? A 10. A 10. A 10. So would you have classified it that you were in excruciating pain? Yes. Okay, now, did you also have restriction of movement? I could not move my arm. You could not move your arm at all or slightly or what was it? So you could only do this with your arm. That's it. Is that correct? So you could do this because the elbow joint was okay, but you couldn't lift it from the shoulder. Is that correct? That's right. Let's see you do it now. Come on. bringing bones and organs and skin and hair and everything else in your marriage and your money and your ministry back to life. All right? So we're going to go, I, I'd like the worship team up here, please. We're going to go into court. We're going to pray. We're going to decree and we're going to get death broken off. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Yes, if I could have the worship team up, please. All right. Do we have the worship team? Okay. Good. Do we have the drummer too? Do we have people like, I want them all. Do we have them? Okay. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, Jesus. Start playing in the spirit, please. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. So let's pray together. You know, uh, Alveda King just um, swore myself, Robert Henderson, and Dr. Francis Miles in as judges in the court. So that's Martin Luther King's granddaughter. And so I have a uh, legal right, but so do you, because the Bible says we can go boldly, boldly before the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. And that word throne again means a judge's bench. So uh, let's pray together. Say, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I step boldly before the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy in my time of need. Lord, I need you because the spirit of death is using the law breaking in my life to produce fruit for death on my bodily organs, my ministry, my family, my marriage, my business, my finances, my children, and every other part of my life. Lord God, I know as I step into this court, it's a legal matter. 
because no one can keep the whole law. That's what the Bible says, except for Jesus, who fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on my behalf. I step into this court to repent for law breaking, but to also throw myself under the free, unmerited, undeserved, unearned power of grace to defeat the spirit of death that's producing fruit in my life. Lord God, if there's any sin within me, I humble myself now through repentance. I thank you, Lord, that my repentance causes grace to be released because you give grace to the humble. And I know that 1 John 1, 9 says that when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us, to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, and according to the Amplified Classic, to dismiss my lawlessness. I believe that my repentance and the grace of God is causing all my lawlessness, my law breaking that's allowed death to attack me, to be dismissed. The charges will have to be dismissed because of the blood of Jesus, because of my testimony in this court, because of grace. I thank you, Lord. I am the persistent widow. Avenge me of my adversary. Death has taken my life in many ways. Killed loved ones. It's killing my body. It's killing my marriage, my ministry, my business, my money. But you will avenge me of my adversary. I will be avenged. I will have the justice. The Bible says that I'm allowed to have. I'm going to be persistent in this matter until I see full justice. And I decree my testimony is that Christ died for me, purchased my freedom from the curse of the law of sin and death. And I decree that Jesus made death and its power of no effect and to naught. So by legal decree, death should have no effect on me and his power brought to naught in my life. And I decree Jesus fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on my behalf. So he did it for me. He did something I could never do. And I decree that the Bible says that Jesus has abolished death and given me life and immortality. And I decree that I'm not justified, made righteous, and acquitted by keeping the law, because that's impossible. I'm justified, made righteous, and acquitted by grace, by grace, unearned, unearned, undeserved grace. I get it for free. And where my sins of law breaking increased and abounded, grace super abounded. Increase some more and wiped out the law that was against me. In Jesus' name, I know that the foundation of your throne is righteousness and justice. I came here and I will get the justice that Jesus died to give me, and I will be avenged of my enemy of death. Now say, now, Lord, I put a divine restraining order 
against the spirit of death operating in my body and in any part of my life. I ask that this court arrest him and prevent him from ever attacking me again because I stand firmly under grace, firmly under grace. And it is by grace that it, the power of the promise will become stable and valid and guaranteed. Just like it did for Abraham and Sarah. And then I decree that my flesh will become fresher than a child's and I will return to the days of my youth because God is gracious to me and he's given me an atoning sacrifice in Jesus Christ. Now I want you to start cheering to God right now. Start cheering. Now I want you to stand up and I want you to put your hand on top of the person next to you's head. And I want you to say this with me. Say, death, you have to come out of their hair, <laughs> their brain, their ears, their eyes, their sinuses, their mouth, their jaw, their teeth, their esophagus, their bones, their muscles, their tendons, all of their organs, their skin, their respiratory system, their digestive system, their hormonal system, their reproductive system, their skeletal system, every part of their systems, right now, right now, right now, death come out, 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 come out, come out, come out, come out. Now just start decreeing life, life into their bones. Go, life, start decreeing life, life into their bones, life into their heart, their lungs. Their intestines, their gallbladder, their kidneys, their liver. Death has to come out and life go in. Come on, come on. Life, 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 life. Decree life. Come on, decree life. Come on, decree life. Okay, now we're gonna sing. Everybody come up front. We're gonna sing. Come on. Come on, let us go.
person next to you. Find out where is death afflicting them? Is it their marriage? Is it their body? What part of their body? Is it their finances? And take that spirit to court right now. Come on. Help out your neighbor. Start sharing. <clears throat> Praying for each other. Right now. Right now. Right now. You announced that that spirit of death has to let go. That spirit of death has to let go because of the blood and because of grace. Grace is making that promise stable, valid, and guaranteed. Grace trumps the law. Where sin increases unbound, grace superbounds. Decree it. Decree it. They're not acquitted by keeping the law. They're acquitted by grace. Rebuke that spirit of death. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Forever, amen. Holy, holy. Tinnitus is being healed. Tinnitus. Tinnitus is being healed right now. Tinnitus. Tinnitus is being healed right now. Ever ah. Migraine headaches. Migraine headaches are departing right now. Right now. Ankle pain is being healed right now. Right now. Kidney stones. Kidney stones are being dissolved right now. Kidney stones are being dissolved right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Kidney stones, I command you to dissolve. I command you to dissolve right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. Somebody has a liver disorder right now. Liver disorder is being healed right now. Liver disorder right now. Somebody has advanced aging. Advanced aging. You're, that's being broken off of you right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. Right now. Right now. Menopausal issues. Menopausal issues. 
I command that spirit of death to let you go. No more menopausal issues. No more menopausal issues right now. I bind that spirit. I judge it. I judge that spirit right now. Back and spine problems. I command pain. I command pain to come out. Pain come out. Out of the spine, out of the back. Right now, out of the neck. Right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Arthritis. Arthritis. I command arthritis. Die, arthritis. Die, arthritis. Die, arthritis. Ears are opening. Ears, ears are opening. Ears are opening right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, right now. 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 In Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. Deaf spirit, come out. Come out, I judge you. I judge you. I judge you. I judge you. A rare disorder is being healed. A rare disorder is being healed now. 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 